Hello everybody. Uh, till now we have learned about the organization of CTD. Then uh, in detail we have learned module 1, module 2, module 3, module 4 and module 5. We have yesterday we have discussed about module 1 and module 2. Today we are going to learn module 3 in detail. So module 3 is mainly divided into drug substance and drug product. Today's uh, uh, session will be a uh, quality uh, section of module 3 uh, which is also called as CMC. So under CMC uh, we are going to discuss about drug substance and drug product. So before going to drug substance we will discuss about the DMF. So DMF is what the drug master file and it is a mandatory requirement that we have to purchase a DMF for, from a third party and by using that DMF we are going to manufacture our drug product and before manufacturing you have to see whether the DMF meets the US requirement or not or if you are filing to Europe then you have to uh, uh, see the CEP and the ASMF that is active master file. Okay. Then uh, what is the DMF review and why it is necessary and what is, is the importance of DMF review that we are going to discuss and when does it become essential for a DMF review from the FDA perspective. Now why DMF is imp uh, important and why it is called the DMF are not reviewed or approved. So we will discuss. Uh, checking of CMC information and ensuring the appropriateness and suitability of the information defines the essence of DMF review. So it determines whether the information included in the DMF is adequate to establish that the material is suitable for the intended use. So DMF review becomes an important process of an approval of IND, NDA or ANDA and it is required to ensure that DMF is adequate to establish the use of intended use in the finished product formulation. So coming back to same question why DMF is never approved or disapproved because when an applicant who is going to file generic application ANDA that applicant has to purchase a DMA from the third party and he has to give one LOA that is called letter of authorization to health authority. So based on that letter of authorization when FDA will review your application that is ANDA that time the FDA may revert back with his own questions about the DMF if he has any queries regarding the DMF whether the impurity levels are high or any, any kind of uh, queries which comes to the FDA's mind he can directly ask to the DMF holder. So uh, while compilation of ANDA or the generic application you have to give the letter of authorization to FDA and based on that letter of authorization FDA may revert back to DMA folder as well as the applicant. Why this is important because DMA is never approved or disapproved alone. It will be open only when the ANDA application will be reviewed. And that is why it is called DMF is never approved or disapproved. So <coughs> as I said CMC is divided into drug substance and drug product. So under this drug substance again it is divided from S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, S7. So before I discuss all these parts into uh, detail what we have to see I will give one example of roti, how to make a roti. So how to make roti, when we want to make a roti you have to take wheat flour which is your active pharmaceutical ingredient in which you are going to add water plus salt plus vegetable oil. 
so each ingredient has its own function water may act as a binder salt may act as for the taste and sometimes it may act as a preservative vegetable oil may act as a lubricant so when we select wheat flour we have to select the good quality of wheat flour correct nowadays we get the ready made atta that is ashirwad atta or pilsbury atta but in old days we used to select the wheat actual wheat whether it is a surti uh, wheat or lokwan wheat like that so there are different types of wheat and wheat flour available in the market so when you select the wheat flour which is considered as your main active ingredient which is an api to that you are adding different excipient so each excipient has their own function water acts as a binder salt acts as a taste or the preservative and vegetable acts as a lubricant when we mix these all ingredient along with api that is called manufacturing process correct you mix it then you form a dough when you form a dough then the next process is you make the small small balls out of it then you make the balls and then roll it then once you make the chapati then you have to roast it if you are roasting you are controlling the flame if you make the flame high roti will burn right it will uh, be burned or when you make the roti uh, the uh, flame low it won't be fried right so the final output is roti correct but during this you are selecting api excipient then manufacturing process then here you are optimizing the process when you are roasting you are optimizing the process optimization of process and the in process control correct you are controlling the flame correct where it is high, whether the roti should be roasted on high flame or the low flame that you are optimizing so that is called in process control once you make the roti that roti can be packed into different packaging materials like in our case we generally pack into a uh, milton or tupperware right or you can pack into alu foil as well so there are different packaging material wherein you can pack your roti correct then once you pack what happens it will remain stable so you have to conduct the stability so you have to conduct the stability data so similar things if you apply the logic in your api and drug substance and drug product how do we collect the data for drug substance plus drug product so drug substance part is divided into s1 s2 s3 s4 and s5 s6 and s7 so each section now we will discuss uh, by considering example of this roti but the basic concept remains the same the first step is api characterization then what manufacturing then optimization of sweet then uh, in process control then the uh, uh, packaging material stability correct in between i have missed one step that is reference standard so when you make the roti that roti has to be tested right when it is tested you always compare with the reference standard so when you are at home your husband will say aapki roti mere mummy jaisi nahi bani correct so that time he always refer to one reference standard so that is why reference standard and the test so your roti will be a test and it will always be compared with the reference so you are clear with the concept how it is applicable in our drug substance and drug product once you make the roti roti will become your final product then for this roti also you know you have to gather information in the form of p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 p6 p7 and p8 
Now uh, the main thing you should keep in mind that is drug substance part that is from S1 to S7 is coming from the DMF holder because you are getting DMF ready, correct? So in that DMF you should see to that all the sections are ready, all the sections are nicely written and those uh, sections has to be justified. Okay? So, you being a regulatory professional, you have to review the DMF parts thoroughly and see to that whether that DMF is helpful as per the rules and regulations and whether it meets the requirements of US FDA or Europe or wherever you are going to uh, register your product. Now, coming to P part, correct? P part, in P part, we have to discuss from P1 to P8. So, same, same logic if you apply, what is P1? P1 is a composition, P2 is a PDR, P3 is manufacture, P4 is what? P5, P6, P7, P8. Manufacturing process, then excipient, then control of drug product, then reference standard, then uh, container closure system that is packaging materi material, right? Container closure system, then the stability. So, in drug product also, if you see more or less the same sections are there except the P2, that is product development report. If you compare with S1, S2, S3 up to S7 and P1 to P8, more or less all the sections are same as per the drug substance. So similarly, you have to gather all the information about your drug product. So drug product is manufactured in our laboratory by the pharmacist and it is analyzed by the scientist, the analytical scientist. So all the data has to be collected from different different stakeholders and you have to write PDR that is pharmaceutical development report as per ICH Q8, ICH Q8. Once PDR is written, then it has to be reviewed by regulatory professional. Okay. So, similarly, all these documents are coming from different different departments are reviewed by the regulatory professional and then it is compiled in the format of CTD. In that CTD, under CMC, under CMC, drug substance and drug product. Clear? The concept is clear? You must have uh, realized how uh, the logic should be applied uh, from the uh, example of roti. Okay. In roti also, we are following the same steps right from the drug substance to drug product. So, now we will discuss uh, each and every section from S1 to S7. So, in S1, S1 is again divided into S1.1 that is nomenclature, S1.2 that is structure and 1.3 is general properties. This section is very important though it is called general information about drug substance. Why it is important? Because during development, the information about the polymorphism and stereochemistry including supporting information apart from other general properties must be a part of general properties. A description on solubility based on different pH buffers that is pH 1.2, 4.6 and 6.8 has to be provided. pK value will have to be included. So, these are the special checks we have to consider while gathering the information about what drug substance under general information. Though it is called general information, the molecular weight, the structure, the API characterization data and the polymorphism, solubility, pH value, pK value, everything is important because it is going to affect your quality of the product at the end of the shelf life. And that is why you have to see when you review the DMF, you have to see whether the vendor has captured all the information under the general uh, information or not. And then let us talk about S2 part that is manufacture. 
manufacture again divided into S 2.1 to 2.6 which again gives the manufacturer information that is who is the manufacturer, his name, address and everything then the description of manufacturing process and the process control. Suppose if your manufacturing process has 10 reactors, 10 steps then it has to be described in detail that is step 1, step 2, step 3 up to step 10 and in between if he must have used any reagent, any activator or anything solvent and everything should be mentioned under the manufacturing process and the manufacturing flow chart has to be given. Then what are the controls you know has to be <coughs> means what are the controls uh, considered during that manufacturing of the drug substance that you have to give into the write up. Then the critical steps and any intermediates critical steps are again very important because sometimes what happens we forget to write the critical steps and that becomes uh, you know the deficiency. So, critical steps are very important again the DMF uh, uh, is divided into open part and the closed part. So, critical steps are already you should mention into the closed part that will not be a part of open part of DMF. So, that you should keep in mind then the process validation and evaluation whatever manufacturing process you must have developed how it was developed how it was validated and the development summary report along with the process validation report you have to provide into this section. Then, <coughs> so this is all about the S2, but during this writing uh, write up of S2 part what special checks have to be uh, kept in mind that is first is root of synthesis should include the intermediate name, reagent, solvent catalyst used in the synthesis, then flow chart to capture uh, the in process checks, in case of advanced intermediate the chemistry of the same must be included, then the manufacturing process write up should be simple and should be similar to the actual process, over detailing may be avoided. So, generic write up should be followed in the open part of the DMF, reprocessing criteria should be defined, usually reprocessing is avoided, but if at all you are using then it should be justified. <coughs> then batch size details and the batch formula to be clearly defined with the scope of the minimum and maximum batch size captured only in case of restricted part of the DMF. The control of materials should be complemented by the supplier and the in-house certificate of analysis. So, critical steps should be checked with the process development report and must be correlated. Further a proper justification should be in place for classifying them as critical, this information must be present in the development report. If at all you are saying that this uh, step 5 is the critical step, you should be able to justify why it is critical, right? otherwise it would not be acceptable by any health authority. So, you are the uh, development guy, you are the, manufa you are the manufacturing your uh, drug substance then should be aware of each and every step of the manufacturing process and how it was developed. Then the intermediate specification must be justified in terms of purity, related substances, residual solvents, catalyst, a mass balance must be existing while defining the specification of the intermediates. For key starting material the above approach should be followed. What is key starting material? The key starting material plays an important role when you uh, start your manufacturing process for any drug substance. So, key starting material if you are unable to define properly and uh, if you uh, supply all the relevant documents received from the vendor who is supplying your key starting material then you will face a problem in future. Then the process validation protocol and report has to be correlated with the batch manufacturing records and must be verified for all in process and critical parameters. Critical parameters should be captured in the process validation protocol and must be connected to the development report. Each product uh, you must be aware of that process validation plays an important role and you have to take minimum 3 batches as a process validation 
because of the consistent result right once you get the consistent result then you can claim that your process is validated and how it was validated it has to be documented by the mean of pvp the process validation protocol has to be in place and then only you can go for process validation report so process validation protocol and report should match and if there is any difference in the process during the validation process uh, apart from your protocol then it has to be justified generally it should not happen there should not be any difference then the manufacturing development report should contain the rationale of the synthetic route should cover the genesis of impurities the use of appropriate solvents and the scientific justification of defining critical steps and defining intermediates proper experiments negative observation to be conducted for process optimization formation of the right morph and the right isomer which is usually covered must be a part of your development report this precaution has to be taken right from the beginning whether your product <coughs> your uh, substance has the polymorphism isomerism or you know the solubility issues ph issues that has to be considered during the development stage only and proper justification to be given and everything should be captured in the manufacturing development report then s3 talks about the characterization here you have to capture the structural elucidation and the impurities what are the special checks that is proper scientific information to be provided for the polymorphism and identification of the stereochemistry of the active ingredient amongst other special studies that is uv ir nmr mass balance dsc and xrd dsc is dif differential scanning colorimetry so these are the special checks under the s2 uh, s3 uh, characterization part the section so impurities again it is very important and impurities has to be analyzed as per the ichq3 uh, and apart from the normal process impurities residual solvents and degradation impurities impurities due to starting material when the key, key starting material is in advanced intermediate should be included in the write up so impurities are mainly generated uh, due to the key starting material then uh, the reagents or the solvents used during the manufacturing process then during the stability also impurity uh, may be generated that is also called as a degradation product so whenever at which stage the impurities are being generated that you have to uh, capture in the write up then absence of a catalyst if used should be provided any special reagent like complex compound should be captured in the impurity write up so this impurity section is very important and how effectively you write that section uh, is based on your skill set again because after writing you should not get any queries from the health authority uh, that precautions to be taken by a uh, cmc writer then a mention on xenotoxic impurities has to be captured in the impurity write up a proper write up indicating that <coughs> route of synthesis does not involve any formation of a xenotoxic substance with proper justification that is reference of structural alloys and m stays so m stays is generally carried for the xenotoxic impurities nowadays as per ich m7 this xenotoxic uh, impurities are also becoming a most important part of uh, any dossier uh, why it has become important because because of any answer because of the safety because any health authorities main objective is to protect public health and you have to meet those requirement and you have to prove that your product is of safe use when it is consumed by a human being so the impurities must be also appropriately captured in the specification of the final product so uh, till now we have discussed uh, s1 s2 and s3 part now we'll discuss s4 that is control of drug substance under this section you have to attach a specification method of analysis analytical method validation as per ichq2 batch analysis and justification of specification we will discuss each one of them and uh, what are the special checks to be considered under this section 
So specification should include test parameters which sufficiently controls its quality and a good enough specification is actually not good enough. Example minimum two identification tests with one as stability indicating and specific. So you have to include two identification tests, one is by HPLC or any instrumental analysis and the second one could be a chemical analysis, IR spectra or UV spectra. So that is a mandatory requirement when we go for the regulated market and uh, under the ICH CTD uh, sections. So all known impurities, single unknown and total impurities needs to be controlled. An XRD test is a must should the molecule exhibit a polymer. Catalyst if any used in the synthesis of API, key starting material may be controlled. So not necessary if absence in three batches shown and residual solvents need to be included. Assay and related substances will have to have a stability indicating method although the compendia method may be a titration. Why I have written like this because uh, your assay uh, method or your product could be an official in USP. But USP says that the, the material is analyzed by titration, correct? Still you have to develop your in-house method which is HPLC and which should be stability indicating. Why it is called stability indicating? Because during the stability many degradation products are generated and your method should be rugged enough to capture those impurities during the analysis. So you have to develop a method and validate as per the ICH Q2 which is called the stability indicating method because that method will take care of the impurities or the degradation product generated during the shelf life. A proper stability indicating chromatographic method will need to be developed for a TLC test although the compendia may recommend a TLC test. If it is a TLC uh, method recommended by USP then also you have to validate that method. The method reference that is compendia or in-house should be included in the specification page of DMF. The method validation for key testing parameters like assay, related substance, residual solvents, metal catalyst should be adequate and conducted as per ICH. Specificity, precision, linearity, range, robustness, accuracy, force degradation, solution stability etc. will have to be a part of validation package. So for the validation package you should refer to ICH. Q2 guidance is the most updated guidance. The method validated should be the same as that of the final method adapted to test the drug substance because you are taking the uh, DMF from the third party or the vendor. So your method should be similar to the vendor. It should be adapted from the vendor from the DMF and it has to be validated at your site in your factory. Then the similarly uh, when you uh, validate the method for drug product also you have to adapt the method uh, for the drug substance you have to develop along with your uh, drug product and the placebo and then you have to validate that method as well. The certificate of analysis should have the batch size mentioned among other typical details. Typical chromatograms may be provided for a particular batch of API. A scientific rationale has to be provided for the specification adapted for the drug substance this is more critical if the molecule is in-house molecule. Thus all testing parameters have to be justified properly and should have scientific bearing. Let us talk about S5 that is a reference standard. In this the special checks are in case an internal standard that is primary reference standard is used then the method of preparation of the same should be included with the proper structure elucidation details. The qualification details should be clearly stated in case of the working standard is qualified. Uh, many a times what happens reference standard are very costly and uh, we, uh, because of the uh, cost we are unable to use it for the routine analysis. So based on the root, uh, uh, reference standard received either USP, EP or BP you have to make one working standard for the day routine analysis and you have to qualify. How do you qualify? You have to yes, uh, test with the reference and generate the data and whatever data is being generated the analytical data the chromatogram has to be attached under this section and you have to give the comparison between the reference standard and the working standard. 
So, the COI of all working standard needs to be provided with typical chromatograms. In case of reference standard use, then the proper lot number needs to be given. Then S6 is a container closure system. Special checks that is IR spectra of the poly bags needs to be submitted. Now, in case of drug substance, you are going to pack into the poly bags, whereas in drug product, you are going to pack into blisters, HDP jar or uh, aloe blister, whatever uh, the uh, bottles and all. But in case of drug substance, the poly bags are used and then those poly bags are uh, kept into the big drums. So, when the material is uh, coming in contact with that poly bag, so how uh, the quality will be affected or, or how it will be stable that we have to prove that uh, after storing uh, into the poly bag, still our drug substance is stable. So, you have to provide the specification about that poly bag that is IR spectra, specification, COA, the material safety data sheet. So, all these documents are important when you are purchasing a poly bag from a uh, uh, third party or the vendor. So, the supply detail consisting of the compliance certificate, then the declaration as per uh, current European guidelines, compatibility of the polymer granules from the manufacturer needs to be given. Generally, these poly bags are uh, made up of polymers, you know, different, different polymers are used. So, this is very important and the material of construction uh, is very important. The supply declaration is also uh, has to be given. Then safe use of plastic material and articles intended to come in contact with the food stuff or pharmaceuticals or drinking water should be provided in this section. Then the last section is S7 that is stability data. So, this section is also divided into 7.1, 7.2 and 7.3. So, 7.1 is the stability summary and the conclusion. 7.2 is post approval stability commitment you have to give under this section and you have to attach the stability report which you are conducting for the accelerated and the real time shelf life. So, what are the special checks in this section is to check the stability specification against the test protocol that is stability protocol, then the stability condition and the stability time points, check parameters like polymorphism etcetera and the post approval stability protocol and commitment should be in place. Why this commitment is important? Because during the application you are providing only 6 month accelerated stability data along with the application and you have to give the commitment that further uh, stability studies will be conducted and the report will be provided as an annual update or the amendments. So, stability data uh, is generally uh, three, 6 months for the US submission. 6 months for the US submission and the 6 months for the Europe submission as well. Uh, this is I am talking about 6 month accelerated that is 40 degree centigrade and 75 percent relative humidity. So, storage condition and retest date should be included in the stability summary which should be supported by the stability data. Earlier we used to submit 3 months accelerated stability data. Uh, data. So, uh, that is why I have corrected this slide. Then uh, module 2 we have already discussed and uh, module 3 uh, is also covered. Under module 3 we have covered only drug substance part that is S1, S2, S3, S4, S5 and S7. Thanks for your kind attention.